Buongiorno and benvenuto to my patio in northern Italy. In this video, I will be tackling the wheels of Ziodino's 1986 Villa Triestina Ramato vintage road bike. As shown in the very first video of this restoration series, links down below, the front wheel is a Campagnolo record hub laced to a Fiamme Master tubular rim. The rear wheel is a Mika super fast hub laced to an FIR EL19 clincher rim. Besides giving both hubs a much needed clean and service, I will also rebuild both the wheels with matching rims. This is a big job, so let's get stuck into it. I'm starting with the front wheel. First, I'm going to disassemble the hub to check the condition of the bearings. I'm using a 13mm cone wrench to hold the cone in place while I undo the lock nut with a 16mm spanner. The lock nut comes undone easily. As you can see, I've got the wheel sitting on a plastic tub to prevent it flopping about and to catch any loose ball bearings, but a table vise would be a good option too. After the lock nut is off, there is a slotted washer. Now to unscrew the cone. I have to hold the opposite lock nut to prevent the axle from spinning while I unscrew the cone with the 13mm cone spanner. Don't let go of the axle. The cone is all that is holding it from falling out. With the cone removed, I can see that there is plenty of grease around the ball bearings. This is a great sign. I can now carefully remove the axle. There is plenty of grease holding the ball bearings in place. I'm removing them with a strong magnet. There are 18 in total, 9 on both sides. Okay, the bearings and cones look in great condition. I wanted to check that first before the laborious task of undoing all the spokes and freeing the hub from the rim, which I'll do now. I'm using a cheap spoke wrench, but I could also cut the spokes since I won't be using them again. And it's free. Time to give the hub a thorough clean in hot soapy water and degreaser. I'm back with the cleaned Campagnolo record front hub ready for reassembly. The first step is to set the drive side or right side lock nut position. To do this, screw the right side cone, slotted washer and lock nut onto the axle until about 5 threads are showing. Check this position in the fork dropouts. The axle should not protrude beyond the outer face of the dropout, but be a millimeter or two recessed. Once the position is correct, Tighten the cone back onto the lock nut using a 13mm cone wrench 
and 16 mm wrench to keep the lock nut in position. Okay, now with the right side lock nut position set, I can start the rest of the reassembly. I'm first going to double check that all the old grease and grime has been cleaned from the inside face of the dust caps, which aren't removable. Now to add plenty of good grease to the bearing races. Unfortunately for me, this tube does not have the best nozzle for this. The grease should be packed into the races. I'm using the stick to get it there and to even it out. Now, add the nine ball bearings. They should sit snug together and against the race. Add more grease on top and even it out if need be. Be generous with the grease. Now carefully insert the axle. Push it all the way through. Check that it is contacting the bearings and rotate smoothly. When it is all good, flip the hub over and add the remaining nine ball bearings. I'm adding grease now, but I should have done that earlier. Place the ball bearings into place with the axle slightly lowered to give you enough room. More grease on top as before. Now screw on the cone all the way down until it just contacts the bearings. Preload adjustment comes at the end. Then the slotted washer and finally the lock nut, but don't tighten it down yet. Check that the axle rotates smoothly. 
I've wiped off all that excess grease and now for a pre preload adjustment. I'm going to tighten the left side cone, the one just installed, until most of the side to side play in the axle is eliminated, but it still spins smoothly. I will make the final adjustment to remove all side to side play once the wheel is built because the diameter of the rim will amplify any movement in the axle and I will be able to make a far more accurate preload adjustment to the bearings. On to the rear hub and a major problem. It's trash. Time and atmospheric moisture have not been kind to the bearings and racers. They are pitted and corroded. Unlike the front hub, all the grease has dried and decomposed long ago. So I had to find a new hub. But before I show you what I found, here is how I removed the freewheel. Unfortunately, the removal tool and FR4 from Park Tool doesn't fit over the 17mm lock nut. So I have had to remove the axle working from the non-drive side. It's the same procedure as for the front hub, but this hub, a Mika super fast hub, uses a 14mm cone wrench and a 17mm wrench for the lock nut. It was at this point during the rehearsal of this video that all the ball bearings fell out as I removed the axle from the drive side to reinsert it in the non-drive side. But the bearings don't matter for this step. I just need the axle in place and the quick release skewer to loosely hold the FR4 in the 20 spline mystery freewheel tool fitting. And then with a big old adjustable wrench, unscrew counterclockwise to free the freewheel threads. I needed to use a lot more mechanical advantage the first time round. The freewheel unscrews smoothly. I will overhaul this in a future video and I hope it's in better condition than the hub. Subscribe so you don't miss that video. Alright, so what replacement hub did I find? Well, thanks to Zia Lila, Dino's wife, I managed to get my hands on a set of Campagnolo Victory Hubs laced to Nissi tubular rims. But as you might have guessed, I won't be able to have matching hubs on this build because the front hub of this set is also toast. But at least both hubs will be Campagnolo and of the correct era. A couple of things to note is that this wheel set has been laced 4 cross. Both hubs have 36 holes. The spokes are straight gauge 2mm or 14 gauge and this rim requires spoke hole washers. Here is an exploded view of the Campagnolo Victory rear hub. I've skipped the disassembly because it's identical to the front, except that I used a 14mm cone wrench and a 17mm spanner for the lock nut. And here is the cleaned and assembled Campagnolo Victory rear hub. I've decided to skip the detailed assembly as well because it's essentially identical to the Campagnolo record front hub, but with the addition of the extra washers. Once again, I haven't set the bearing preload properly and there is just the slightest side to side play in the axle. However, the bearings are rolling silky smooth. I'll make the final adjustment after I've finished building the wheel. I'm just an amateur wheel builder and there are plenty of other videos on YouTube by experts from which you can learn wheel building. I've put a couple of links in the video description box below. 
Here I'm just going to describe some of the choices and considerations I've made for the wheel set for Ziodino's Villa. First off, rims. I've gone with Mavic Open Elite in the silver finish. My reason for choosing these was that they are affordable, durable, and they won't look too out of place on this bike. Also, the stickers come off easy so no one will know that they're French. Second, I've gone with quality spokes for a quality ride. I'm using Sapim Race double butted spokes with matching silver brass nipples. Never cheap out on spokes. Third, the lacing pattern. I'm lacing both rims three cross and I'm paying special attention to the old bedding in marks around the spoke holes on the flanges of both hubs. Those are the marks that I've highlighted here. These are created by the J-bend of the spokes as they exit the hole. On both the front and rear hub, the first set or leading spokes on each flange were laced heads in, meaning that the spoke was inserted from the inside face of the flange. I've repeated that lacing style for this build. And as you can see here, the new spokes cover the old bedding in marks perfectly. If I had gone heads out or started at an adjacent spoke hole, swapping leading to trailing, those marks would be visible and a bit unsightly as a result. Both wheels were a dream to build, and as an amateur wheel builder, I was very happy to get the spoke lengths perfect. Now on to the final bearing preload adjustment. I have the drive side lock nut held firmly in this table vise. I'm loosening the lock nut on the non-drive side with, in this case, a 17mm spanner while holding the cone in place. Otherwise you risk undoing the drive side lock nut as well. With the lock nut undone, just a few threads, I adjust the cone. In this case, tightening it a bit. I then tighten the lock nut while holding the cone in place. Now I check for play and there is none. But when I check the axle, it doesn't rotate smoothly in my fingers. So this setting is too tight. So time to repeat the process and loosen the cone just a touch more. This time the setting is just right. No side to side play in the axle and the bearings spin easily and smoothly. Job done! Before installing the wheels on the bike, time for a weight check. 868 grams for the front wheel and 985 grams for the rear. So that makes 1,853 grams for the pair. Finally, here they are installed. Let me know what you think about these new wheels in the comment section below. Should I have used error correct rims or bit the bullet and laced a pair of 50 millimeter deep carbon clinches? Anyway, that's enough for this very long video. Next time, I'll be rebuilding that mystery freewheel. And after that, all that is left is the finishing touches to the restoration of this 1986 Villa Triestina Ramato Bici di Corsa. Like, subscribe and hit that bell icon. Until next time, a dopo!